Welcome to our comprehensive guide to SAP business functions. Today, we embark on a journey to unveil the complexities of these essential components of the SAP system. The business functions in SAP are essentially modules or features that can be activated or deactivated according to your business needs. They allow you to customize your SAP system, adding or removing functionality as required. Think of them as individual applications that you can install or uninstall from your smartphone, for example. Each business function targets specific business processes or sectoral needs from finance and logistics to human resources and manufacturing, for example. Their flexibility and modularity make SAP system incredibly adaptable to diverse business scenarios. In order to reach the business function transaction, we need to use the transaction code SFW5. So here, switch framework customizing. So let's execute this transaction code. It could be quite long because this is a huge transaction code and a huge functionality which holds a lot of huge features and technologies inside. So it could be that it takes time to open also if it's the first time you open this transaction within your environment. Then this pop-up will appear. This is a security information from SAP because this is a dangerous transaction on which you can cause some damage on your system. That's why SAP just warning you because you could make a lot of problems. If you want to exit the transaction, then you can press exit transaction button or let's continue together. So we are here in the switch framework change business function status transaction. From here, we will be able to manage the business functions available on our system. So on the top menu, you can find some features like the check feature after doing some changes. You can activate the business function with this button. You can open the browser of business function and so on. Here you have a filter field on which you can filter already some business function according to the business function set. It's typically the domain or the type of business function that have been classified by SAP by domain of application, such as, for example, retail, um, insurance, chemicals, and so on. And here you have the folders. And for example, in enterprise business functions, here you have the complete list of business functions available on your system, even if they are already activated or not. For example, this one with this specific icon, it's not an activated business function. This one is not activated already. You see? It's a deactivated business function. If you would like to check one which is already activated, you have a different icon. You see, this icon means with the three little points here, means that this is an already activated business function. You can also check here the activated, activated on date and time when it has been activated. So it's a different icon. And the last icon, you could see also if it's this one with two different rows in, in different sense, means that this is a reversible business function. Overrides, they are unreversible. So you cannot go backward. So this is just the code of the business function, which has to follow a specific naming convention from SAP. We will discuss about that later on this video. You can see here the description of the business function on the second column and a lot of additional information. For example, the release, the SAP release version on which release this business function um, appears. And here the application component where on which package the business function is located. Is it more baby in logistics? 
in human resources, in finance, and so on. And if you would like to activate a business function, you just have to select it and press activate changes on the top menu. With the advent of S4HANA technology, SAP's next generation ERP suite business function have evolved. Unlike their predecessors in ECC, many business functions in SAP S4HANA are pre-activated. This reflects SAP move towards a more streamlined and efficient system architecture. In SAP S4HANA, pre-activated business functions are integrated into the core system, offering improved performance and reduced complexity. For example, functions related to financial operation or logistics management are part of the standard system, guaranteeing faster configuration and immediate access to advanced features. However, this also means that users need to be more discerning. Since some of these functions are irreversible, once activated, it's crucial to fully understand their impact before implementation. So, as discussed, there are a lot of business functions already activated by default thanks to the move to the S4HANA technology. You can list all these business functions directly in one folder, this one, S4HANA, always on functions. So if you open this folder, you could see here all the business functions directly and automatically activated permanently thanks to the moving to the S4HANA technology database. And as you can see, we have the icon, which means that these business functions are activated. Understanding SAP's naming convention is like learning a new language that unlocks the capabilities of business functions. Each part of a business function name provides specific information about its purpose and area in the system. Let's take, for example, an example, HTMPAOCI1. HTM indicates that this function concerns human capital management. PAO suggests that it is related to payroll accounting, and CI means that it is about continuous improvement, with one at the end, often representing the version or sequence. This systematic approach to naming helps users to quickly identify the scope and relevance of this function to their specific business processes, simplifying the management and activation of these functions in the system. As discussed earlier in this video, the naming conventions of the business functions are really, really important. So if we open again the folder Enterprise Business Functions, we can see in the first column, as discussed, the name of the business function. So here it has to follow a specific naming convention from SAP. So you can now easily find them based on a specific domain of application, finance, human resources, logistics, and so on. So as discussed, here, for example, you have all the business functions related to the human resources domain or a module. And um, here, for example, we have the business function HCM, so human resources related to the pay management, PAO, so the accounting, and CI means that this is an improvement based on specific features. And you have the number at the end, one, two, three, four, five, until nine for the same business functions, which bring the specific new feature inside. So this is a specific new feature. This is the new version of the business function. This is the new version and so on and so on until the last one. And with the same process, you have all these business functions related to a specific naming convention. Here, for example, these are the business functions related to the logistics domain with LOG, logistics. This is for the enterprise asset management, which is part of the PM plant maintenance application component. And you have here the number, so the version number of the business function. 
So with this process, you can easily find also because it's ordered in an alphabetic way. So it's really easy to find the business function within this transaction. In the SAP ecosystem, the distinction between reversible and irreversible business functions is crucial. Reversible functions offer flexibility. You can test them, use them, and if they don't suit your needs, you can simply deactivate them. It's like trying on clothes on a fitting room, for example. Irreversible functions, however, are a bigger commitment. Once activated, they permanently alter your system's configuration. This irreversible nature requires careful consideration through impact analysis and exhaustive testing in a sandbox environment before deployment. For example, enabling functions for advanced general ledger capabilities could irreversibly alter your financial data structures. Such decisions should be aligned with long-term business strategies and IT roadmaps. In order to make the difference between the reversible and irreversible business function within this transaction, you have a dedicated icon. So this icon with both arrows in different directions means that this is a reversible business function. So if you place the mouse just above here on the logo, you can see the, the complete name of the business function with the reversible word. And also in the description column, if you open it completely, you can see that at the end of each description of reversible business function, you have here the word reversible. So for this one, for example, it's written here. For this one here, it's written here. This one, it's written here and so on. So you can see when a business function is reversible or not, because it's really important. Okay, you can go back if the business function is reversible, but if it's not, then it's over. If you have some problems, then it will be really, really difficult to get back to a functional system. Searching for and analyzing business function is a fundamental skill for SAP professionals. Start by using the transaction code SFW5 to explore the functionality available in your system. This transaction provides a complete view of all the business functions, their status and details. Complement with this external resources such as the SAP L portal, SAP community forums and user group discussions. These platforms offer practical information, best practices and case studies from other SAP users. When analyzing a business function, consider its relevance to your business processes, its capability with existing system configurations, and the potential benefits and risks. Collaborate with key players from different departments to assess functional impact and ensure alignment with business objectives. Navigating through SAP business function is a journey of continuous learning and adaptation. By understanding their nature, their impact on implementation and their strategic value, you can realize the full potential of your SAP system. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the SAP business function. Stay curious, keep exploring, and here's to your success in the dynamic world of SAP. See you soon.